Hello everyone, welcome to Java Generics. In this entire course, a special designed for to learn what is generics and how to use them and where to use them. Right? So generics is one of the important topics which we need to know as a experienced developer in Java. It's okay if you're not aware of generics, but the more experience you're gonna gain, you need to know about the generics. Because the moment you start learning generics, you will be much more comfortable while learning the Java design patterns. Okay, so let me show you something. So in your project or in your programs, you might have seen these kind of uh, strange things. So in the beginning, we might wonder what are those things? So these things called as the Java generics. So how do you tell these are all generics? Because in Java, if you see somewhere the less than and greater than symbol in between that, there will be something that is called as a generics. So basically that a less than and greater than symbol they are called as a diamond operator so what does it mean so whenever you find some diamond operator with some strange letter in it which is a generics so in java we have a generic methods and generic classes and we're going to talk about how to create a generic class and how to use them and how can i create a generic method and how can i use it so before that let me tell you what are the course content. So in this course, we're going to talk about what is generics and then why do we need them? And then we'll talk about arrays and collection. We moved from arrays to collection. So there must be some reason why we moved from arrays and collections, right? So what is not there in arrays and what is available in collection? So after that, we move to generics. Generics has been introduced in Java 5 version, right? So there is something missing in arrays and collections and which is available in generics. So we need to know why. And not only that, we're going to talk about each and every single topic about the generics with a proper, a simple examples. So in order to understand the topic, we need to have a proper example, which is easily understandable. Let's not waste time. Let's directly jump into topic and we'll start coding. Hello everyone, welcome back. So let's talk about what is generics and what are we going to do with that? So think about this scenario. So you have some a method which will perform some addition operation. So you might pass some integers to the method as the inputs. But just in case you want to send some double data type or long or float, do you think that method will work? No, it will not work because that particular method will only accept the integer inputs. But think about the scenario. In numbers, we have different types of data types, right? Like uh, we have a short, int, long, double, float. All of them are number types. So if you want to perform some addition operation, we have to write a different methods for different types. And that doesn't look good, right? So we have to write a generic method. So the generic method, which will perform the same operation for all the types of a data. It doesn't matter whether I'm passing an integer or I'm passing double or I'm passing long, it doesn't matter. So all it can do is it has to perform the same operation for all kind of datas. Okay, so what is the another importance of generics? So when it comes to generics, it will provide us a compile time safety, which helps us the programmer to catch the invalid or wrong type at the compile time itself we don't have to wait for the uh, deployment and once the deployment is done and while we're running the application we'll end up with the runtime exception we don't want to do that so the only reason we are going for generics our compiler will identify the issue as soon as possible okay what are the advantage so when you go for generics there are two important things the first one is you don't have to do the type casting so what do you mean by typecasting? We'll come to that point. And then the second thing is type safety. So th these two things are available in generics. And you might ask, so will those things are not available in arrays and collections? Yes, they do have it, but we have some problems over there. So let's talk about what is array and what is collection. And then we'll find out what is the problem with the arrays and collection. Then why we went to the generics. Right. So before we are moving to the that particular topic, I'm going to show you a, a simple example. 
so why why the generic is so important for example what i'm trying to do is i'm going to write a common method which will accept two inputs as part of the outcome it will return the a list of some types so i might send integers i might send a double i might send string or i might send any kind of data type see all i'm looking for that particular method has to return a list of some the data type which you are providing as an input so let's do that hello everyone welcome back as i mentioned earlier so i'm going to show you a simple method which will take some input and it will return the list of the same type and then once we done that we we are trying to modify the same method how it's going to work for multiple types of data right so now what i'm going to do i'm going to create a method here okay so it's going to be static method and it's going to be written list of a string for now so let's assume it's going to return list of a string and then the method name is going to be um, a list method list method and which will accept two inputs like string s1 comma string s2 so the first thing which i'm going to do i'm going to create a list of a string here and then it's going to be a list is equal to new array list got it and then i'm going to add the inputs which we received to the list so list dot add and s1 and list dot add s2 and finally i'm going to return the list This is pretty simple. You might see there is nothing complicated here. Yes, there is no complication here. It's a very simple method. Let me call this method. I want to print the data, so I'm just providing. I'm just calling the method inside the uh, system dot print element. So here I'm going to simply call the list method. I'm passing two inputs. For example, uh, let's pass some uh, fruits names: apple and orange. So basically the ultimate goal of this entire method, it will take some input and it, it will return the same type of the data as a list. But now it only accept the string. Okay, so let me run this. So it's compiling. Yes, now we got the outcome as a list because it is comes in the square brackets, which means it's a list. Okay, now, so what if I want to uh, call the same method with different type, which means I don't want to use the list type. Uh, I mean to say the uh, not the string. I want to pass an uh, integers. So how this method is going to work? So what I'm going to do? I'm going to copy the same line, and I'm going to call it again. And here I'm just trying to modify the inputs type as a different one, like hundred comma two hundred but it will end up with a compilation issue because the method which will accept only the string it will not accept the integers so this is where the generic comes into play take an example so i want a method which will take some inputs and it will return the same data as a list of a data right and how we can achieve it so in order to uh, create a list with the same functionality you have to write another method and if you want it in double, you have to create one more method. If it is a different type or different DTO, you have to go for one more method. So when you have a 10 different types, you have to write 10 different methods. That is not the actual smart way of coding. So we need to find a way how it can be optimized in a simpler way. That is where the generics comes into place. So I'm going to write a method which will take any kind of data or any type of a data and then it will return as a same type of a list with content type so that is where we are going to write the generic method so now i'm going to create a one more method here which is pretty much similar to this one so for now what i'm going to do i'm going to copy the same method because i'm just modifying few things here so and this is going to be a generic method generic method 
and now what I'm, I'm gonna do is and this method is going to be generic method so don't worry about how to create a generic method how to create a generic class for now just see what I'm trying to do here and then I'll give you even more simpler examples what is a generic method and what is a generic class for now let's go with the flow so here I'm gonna mention this is a generic method so what you need to provide so you need to tell the compiler it is a generic method how we can do that simply providing the diamond operator with the type so in between the uh, diamond operator you can provide anything you can provide a t you can provide anything so normally it's a type data so i'm going to provide the instance of t or the letter of t which means which belongs to or which uh, i prefer as a type right okay so then so this now this is going to be a generic method yes because i mentioned this is a generic method and this is a type it's going to take as the input in this particular method right now so i want to return as a list of a string that is where we have a problem i don't want to return as a list of a string so the input data it might be different for each and every call so i don't know what is the type so i'm just simply passing the generic type here which means i don't know what is the type here right and then again there is no string here i'm going to pass just simply the t which means that type first parameter the type second parameter and then and it's not going to be a list of a string because it's going to be a list of t correct and then everything fixed now the compilation issue resolved what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use the same method to call these two i mean execute these two so i'm gonna modify the list method into a generic method still there is no compilation issue and now i'm gonna modify the second one this is where the trickiest part initially it was not working but now it is working how it is possible let me run it see the, the now the generic method which we return which will takes any kind of data as the input and it will return the same type as the list of outputs so i can pass string i can pass integers uh, or we can try something else as well like so let's give something uh, mm, so, uh, some other different kind of or character right so a and b and now i'm gonna run the same method see there is no error here is a string and here is an integer and here is a character but still the method is not throwing any errors or the method call is not throwing any errors because it's a generic method so let me run it one more time you will see see now you can see all the informations here right okay so now you might think so what if i have some custom dto for example like student or something like that what will happen you can try that right so what i'm trying to do here I'm just creating one more DTO here. Simply DTO, so class student. And there's nothing inside the student. I'm just creating it, that's all. And here, let's call the same method. Or, so generic method, the first in input is going to be new student and the second one again is going to be another new student so basically what i'm trying to do here i'm trying to pass two student information but still the method accepts the inputs because it's just another type of a data it's not only for the uh, wrapper type data because we have a primitive for the primitive we have the wrapper also right for the collections so the similar way not only are uh, the wrap wrapper collections we can use the customized DTO as well it will still accept the method so this is the importance of generic okay so now we have seen a simple um, um, implementation of a generic method and what is the advantage of using it and this is the time now we are actually jumping into learn everything step by step we're gonna learn what is a generic method and how to create them and what is the syntax for that and what is a generic class and how to create them and what is the purpose of it Let's learn each and everything step by step. Let's jump in.